The pituitary gland is a very important ductless gland which releases a number of different hormones into the blood. About the size of a baked bean, it's found just below the base of your brain and it's controlled by the hypothalamus just above. The hypothalamus is a very important region of the brain, involved in controlling many of the body's functions, including maintaining temperature, appetite, metabolic rate and reproduction. The pituitary gland represents one route through which the hypothalamus can influence the rest of the body. The pituitary gland itself is made up of two parts, with different embryological origins. The posterior pituitary gland is technically known as the neurohypophysis. This word means downgrowth because it's a downgrowth of the brain. It contains the terminals of nerve fibres originating in the hypothalamus, and when those nerves are stimulated, the posterior pituitary releases its hormones into the blood. The two hormones released from the posterior pituitary of humans include antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. Both of these are peptide hormones, nine amino acids long, and they're closely related in structure. Antidiuretic hormone, also known as ADH and vasopressin, works on the kidney to make it produce concentrated urine. And in high concentrations, ADH causes vasoconstriction of arterioles. Oxytocin promotes contraction of the uterus in childbirth and later on promotes milk release when the baby is breastfeeding. You might then ask why the uterus doesn't contract and the mother doesn't go into labour again every time the baby breastfeeds, if both of these things are controlled by oxytocin. But this is because the oxytocin receptors on the uterus are down-regulated after birth. Remember that changing patterns of receptor expression can be used to change the function of a hormone in the body. The anterior pituitary gland is known as the adenohypophysis. It's not made of neural tissue, so it has to be controlled by the hypothalamus in a different way. What happens is that the hypothalamus releases its own hormones, called releasing hormones, into special blood vessels called portal vessels, which take these releasing hormones directly to the anterior pituitary gland. This is quite unusual from a circulatory point of view, because normally capillaries lead to venules, lead to veins and go back to the heart. But in this case, capillaries at the base of the hypothalamus lead to veins which drain directly to the anterior pituitary, where there's another capillary bed so the hormones get straight where they're needed. In the anterior pituitary gland, the releasing hormones work on special populations of anterior pituitary cells, each population of which produces a different hormone in response. It's helpful to remember that any hormone, the initials of which end in RH, such as TRH, CRH, GNRH and GHRH, will be a releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. RH stands for releasing hormone. And these are all water-soluble peptide hormones. Less conveniently, the hypothalamus also releases inhibitory hormones too. And they have different names, and not all of them are peptides. That complicates matters, but we won't dwell on the inhibitory hormones here. 